question, tell me a little about yourself. Uh, it's kind of a loaded question. I'm not really saying when I ask it, tell me a little bit about all your likes and dislikes. Specifically, what are your intellectual interests and why are you here? You say, you know what? It's in my blood. I've been studying marketing for the past three years. I'm super excited about it. I like lots of things in marketing, but I'm really excited about customer segmentation and how I put that into action. And that's why I'm here, because I know you guys work with a lot of different clients and have a lot of programs in market. Those are the kind of answers that I think people are typically looking for. And they're looking for you to lead them there, right? as far as that goes. You know, we'll typically ask someone with some experience to describe their professional trajectory and explain why this is a logical fit, etc. The single biggest mistake that I see people making in the interview process is not having done their homework beforehand. If you're coming to interview with, with my company, I expect you to have looked something up. I think you should know who our client list is. I think you should know something about what we do. Get a sense of how long we've been in business. Because I will ask. And our HR will ask as standard practice. So would you say our company, how is the stock capitalized? Is it privately held or are we publicly traded? 30% of job applicants get that one wrong. You know, That's something that you absolutely need to research beforehand. And in any company that's publicly traded, you need to look at their earnings report. You need to know how they did, how their stock is doing, where they stand in elocution. Do your homework, come in and talk the talk. Uh, even if it's a 30-minute research before the interview that's done on your iPhone, it's a lot better than coming in and not having something uh, about which to speak. Another one that flubs people up, but this is a standard interview question. You're going to get it on half of yours. What's your biggest achievement? If you have professional work experience, you need to talk about it. And uh, the single biggest mistake people have on resumes is treating it as a vita of here are things that I did. I had this job. And it had the following rules. Was responsible for managing PNL on accounts. Supervised staff. We want to know that, but what we're really looking for is the action verbs that tell me what you did in that role. I want to know that you increased retention by 24% on one of the accounts that you worked for. You know, things that really monetize and put some bang to the buck are what's exciting, and we like to hear about those. Just like we want to hear about a difficult situation where you solved a problem. You should have one of those in place. It can be an academic, it can be a personal, whatever. But have it loaded so you're sure that you've thought about one of the most common interview questions, because you're going to get it lobbed at you in more than one interview. Here's one that's fun. Think about your answer. Tell me what you think about this question, if it's fair or not. But I ask it of everyone. This position requires a blend of specific technical skills, like statistics, SQL, and SAS, uh, and business acumen. Are you a well-balanced applicant, or are you stronger in one dimension than the other? Uh, there's three answers to the question. We've hired people who've given all three of those answers. It's more about taking a stand. But I think the single biggest thing is don't balk on an answer and go, gosh, I just couldn't try. Right? Answer it and tell someone about, you know, tell someone about yourself and be enthusiastic with respect to your response. I mean, there's very few bad answers to questions like this, and you shouldn't assume that anyone's laying a mine for you. Or, or, or a pitfall. There are a few companies that do that. Gallup is one of them that actually uses a behavioral typology question. Uh, and they rule out applicants based on different behavior types. If you're a little too egotistical, they don't go after you. Um, they used to use Myers-Briggs. And uh, they would prefer the I's over the E's and that sort of thing. But I think for the most part, people who are interviewing, you just want to know about yourself. And you're trying to tell them a little bit and why you're an interesting person, and why you're truly interested in that position and being in that company. Um, multitasking is a reality in the work environment today. Some folks are comfortable with multitasking, whereas others work better when they are allowed exclusive focus on single tasks or projects. Which of these types describes you? Right. Uh, is there a right or wrong answer to that question? Probably not, but kind of. Um, in other words, I think you have to pay respect to start prefacing it kind of the way I did and say, I get it. In today's world, everyone has to multitask. And being able to manage your time wisely is true. Believe me, I've done it. You could say, in a perfect world, what I really loved was my practicum class. I spent about half my time on one big project where I was writing a paper. It's the best thing that I ever did. And I loved being able to just jump in and focus and really work on that. Because I know I'm capable of great work. That's a great answer. You know, just like the person who says, no, I've got to be doing multiple things. I've got to have multiple fish in different kettles at the same time. That's a great answer, too. 
Oh, gosh, it's hard to say. And never say, did I get it right? You know, if you've got a right or wrong answer, just, just kick it in and have fun. Um, you must have an answer for question number seven. Why do you want to work for this company? Why are you a good fit for this position? You knew what the job requirements were. There was a description. You need to be able to describe it. And the one thing I want to encourage you is, as you read these job descriptions that are out there, even the ones that I gave you, you probably don't meet all of the bullets and have all of that. So what? Apply anyway if it's something you'd be interested in doing. But play offense rather than defense when you do it and you go into the interview. Almost no one ever meets all the requirements that's listed in a job description. And quite frankly, if you did, it might be a boring job for you. Right? It sounds too simple. Be aspirational. Throw it out there. And if you see something where you're like, I don't think I'm quite qualified, I would say apply for it anyway. But part of offense is also writing a cover letter and doing that electronically and saying, at first blush, I may not appear qualified for this position because I don't meet all of the requirements. But let me assage your fears in the following way and lay it out bullet by bullet. If you do that, it grabs attention. In fact, people who do that are the only ones that are unqualified when they're filtered by an HR person who get passed on in many instances. Because we like anyone who reaches out and does something extra as part of the application process, who says, I was proactive and I wanted to tell you something. right? But I think doing those types of things is kind of exciting. But you've got to have answers as to why you want to work for a company. Where do you see yourself professionally 10 years from now? Tell the truth. The more aspirational that kind of goal pattern is, I think the more excitable we are about you because it tells us this is a self-starter who wants to learn how to do different things and wants to go places. We never expect people to spend their whole career with our company. Our average lifespan for an employee that we hire in analytics is five and a half years. right? And that's we got a lot that are less and, and many that are more. But uh, we know that the market's good. Those people move on as they get good skills. Um, we want to use you while you're here uh, and, and learn a lot from you. The most important question that you'll get asked um, is, what questions do you have for me? I know that sounds seemingly innocuous at the end of an interview, but it's really, really important. And I think it's uh, one of the ones that people flub the most. We're not just asking for you to go, none. I think you've answered all my questions. Never do that, right? Uh, even if there's only one minute left in the slot with that interviewer, try to make the interview last longer. It's always a great sign if the interview is running behind schedule and there's a five minute lag because it means people didn't want to leave until they answered your questions or they wanted to keep talking to you. And so one of the things is, what questions do you have for me? Ask them something about themselves. That's great. Why do you like working there? And they'll tell you and you'll get good answers. And you know, if you're running out of something else, can you tell me a little bit about your career trajectory? Not a bad way to go with that either, particularly if you happen to hire the cantank if you happen to get a cantankerous or recalcitrant interview here. Um, and that will happen. If you've done homework for the job interview and that homework hasn't been able to come out because you've had a really flowed interview where the person has asked you lots of very specific questions, use it at that point. Throw it out there. Never let this get wasted.